That's weird. Okay. Uh, this is Watch Me Work. I'm Susan Lloyd Parks. I'm the master writer chair of the public theater. And because of that, no, not because of that, but years ago, 11 years ago, I sat in the lobby with um, a coworker and her friend, Jesse Alec, and he said, hey, you want to do a new play for my festival? And I said, no, but I will sit with audiences and get them to talk about their creative process and I'll call it Watch Me Work. So 11 years, I started doing that in the lobby of the public theater. The public theater has supported me generously in this endeavor for 11 years and recently HowlRound has come on to help us uh, in our online format a couple years ago, three years ago, maybe they came on and recently, of course, they're here supporting this endeavor as we bring it to you all over the world. So thank you HowlRound and thank you the public theater. This show is all about you guys, you people and your work. And the idea is that we work for 20 minutes together and then we talk to you about your work and your creative process. We have about 40 minutes to do that uh, every day, every weekday. And what we don't have time for, unfortunately, is we don't have time to specifically address things about something you, you're working on, writing, or any other kind of work you're doing. But we do have time, plenty of time to talk to you about your creative process um, and how you're doing and things like that to cheer you on, to be your squad, um, to give you a kick in the butt sometimes, things like that. Okay, so um, if you have a question about your work and your creative process, Audrey's gonna tell you how to get in touch. I am, also I've never heard that story of how Watch Me Work started and that is wonderful. Oh my God, you, oh, it's, it's okay, well, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. Me and Jesse Alec in the lobby, he's like, write a new, write a play for my festival. He, no, he's like, I want to, sorry, I'm taking up time, but I want to have a festival and I'm inviting a lot of young playwrights and I said, uh-huh. And he said, and we want something from a more mature playwright. And I was like, kiss my ass. I'm not ready. <laughs> but I said, but my mouth kept moving. I said, but I will sit in the, uh, I will work with the audience for 20 minutes and then talk about their work for 40 minutes and I will call it Watch Me Work. Done. I, said, oh, shit. I think I'll do that. He said, okay. So here yeah. we are. <laughs> That's amazing. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So no, no. Now you know everything. Now I know everything. If you want to ask questions and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can actually ask us questions on social media. You can tweet at us at, at @WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound H O W L R O U N D, and you can also reach out to us on the on the public's Twitter and Instagram at Public Theater NY. And that's it. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to start by working for 20 minutes and then we will regroup. Um, and again, it's any kind of work. It doesn't have to be writing. It can be any kind of work. If you're a bricklayer, if you're a seamstress sewing some masks, if you're a, you know an ER doctor, whatever work you do, we're here to support each other. Here we go, 20 minutes. Boom. Eh.
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi. It's time to come back. Let's do it. Yeah. So, hope you got something done. I got something done. Got a little something done. A little something, something. It looked like it. Yeah, you know, I was <laughs> doing my thing. Um, okay. So, uh, any questions, comments, notions, so magic, we any charms? Oh. We don't have any we can, hands raised. We can always sit in silence. Silence is always an option. I have a question. Oh. oh someone does yeah. have a question, but I, I want to ask my question. Yeah, you first. go. Yeah, I want I want to hear your question. You never ask anything. <laughs> So you're I know it all. You're the know it all. I know everything. I know everything. It's perfect. Um, so my question is, so I loved what you said yesterday in terms and just now too about like, it doesn't always have to be writing. It's about getting any kind of work done. And I have been meaning to, my boyfriend bought a saw to play many years ago. And Ooh. I was like, I'm going to learn to play the saw. And so I just picked it up just now. And then I got very overwhelmed and I put it back down. And I'm wondering if you have any advice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I totally have advice because I have a, I have the I have this this beautiful thing which is a guitar which I just told my husband it's he just gave it to me for my birthday and it is now officially the only guitar that I want to play which is a big thing to say because I have many guitars but um yeah little tiny steps so if you know you have a saw right and you want to play it. How exciting. That's thrilling. <laughs> so what you do, I mean, you pick it up. I mean, it goes, you know, oh my God. And, you know, it's dangerous too also, you know. I would, uh, are there any, do you know anybody who plays the saw? I know a few people. You know somebody? Do you? I don't. I started to Google it a little bit. There you go. Was, yeah. Google is awesome. You go Google saw playing. I'm sure there's cool. some instructional youtube thing how to get started playing the saw right and that you can and you and i'm sure there's more than one and you can allow that very generous person who has put their instructions on youtube to be your guide you know and then and then grow your community from there what a beautiful thing you know it's always a good idea i think to well one start something new but two play an instrument I think it's it's a great thing you know thank you I'll keep you yeah. posted that is so exciting we could we could jam we could we could jam I, I so far I picked it up so I'll, I'll yeah, keep you posted it, it's like a, it's like a <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's very beautiful that's thank gonna you. be gorgeous oh I'm so excited thank you for yeah that. but that's the thing that's what we do we take so you take just small steps that's so key. I was talking to my husband earlier today and said, I'm having trouble doing such and such. And, I, and he was like, oh, sounds like you're impatient. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's <sighs> exact. He nailed it, right? Because totally. I, I wanted it to happen yesterday. Guess what? Sounds like you're impatient. Hmm, yeah, <laughs> suppose I am. Suppose I am. Good to know. You know, and then you go, okay, well, maybe this might take a little longer. Um. <sighs> And what's enjoyable about it is the thing that's enjoyable, me having had already done it. Some people, there are people who love to be writers and there are people who you've heard, probably heard this before, love to have written, you know? Um, yeah, and that makes for those sense. of us, yeah, for those of us who love writing, the process of it is, is delicious. And for those of us who love playing the saw, it's the playing of it or the guitar. It's the, it's the getting into it and the playing it that's very exciting. And, and sure, things come out of it, songs or who knows what, interesting notes. But it's the doing of it that is the delicious thing, not the product that maybe, you know, we'll get on Broadway with. <laughs> You're right. I'm yeah. very impatient. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's good to recognize that. Like, gee, I wanted it to happen yesterday. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Totally. Good to know. Thank you. All right. We got some questions there from other go. people. <laughs> Crystal. Hey, Crystal. You are up. 
Hi. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. You're hanging in there. How your how's how's your work? How are your kids? How's your whole thing? Um, my kids are driving me crazy. They're yeah. fighting all the time now. Yeah. Um, my my father passed away. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Weeks ago, so it's been a little weird, oh. but it's okay. It's so complicated. It's like. Oh, all right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just been little, we're just hanging in there. We're we're doing good. We're doing we're blessed, you know, we're blessed. Um I actually had to put um the the project that I was the writing play, the play uh, the play that I was having trouble with, I had to put it down because I was invited to work on another project. Mm -hmm. Um it's about demagogues. Mm -hmm. And um so we had to pick a demagogue and write a monologue and a scene for them, but write with hope and make them human. Mm. And I picked somebody who has a similar, well, the similar faith as me, but like kind of on the opposite end as mm -hmm. far as rationale, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm having trouble because I'm almost done. Uh-huh. Because I feel like it sounds preachy and stereotypical uh -huh. of like a far right wing conservative, you know, homophobic mm. person. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to make them sound normal, but it's, it's so, I don't know. I feel like what I've read and researched about the person is so stringent and so strict and so black and white mm -hmm. that it's hard to find like the gray to make them sound not human. It's not like they're an animal, but to make them sound under understandable. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, the saying, um, maybe you don't know, cause I think I made it up or maybe I didn't. There is no, I mean, you've heard, there is no I in team. We've all heard that, but there's right. a me, but there's a me and enemy. Oh, yeah, so that's the second part that I'd like to add on to that. There is a me and enemy, and um, not to say this person is your enemy, but what you know, what what are the points of intersection between you and this person? You know, um, can you can you list those things? I mean, you don't have to talk about them now, of course, but but if you can start thinking about what is this person uh, aside from faith, you know, because you can say, well. I'm, you know, I'm a Christian and so is, you know, the guy who runs, you know, Falwell University, you know what I mean, you know, so there's that, but you can, um, you know, go deep into the things that you guys have, have in common and both hold dear. Okay. That could help. Um, um, Cause then you're not trying to humanize them. You're just actually focusing on things that you uh, agree with, you agree with you. There's probably a lot that this person says that you actually agree with. That's a little scary. Ha. Huh. That's a little <laughs> scary. But what, but it's interesting that you said that's a little scary. What you didn't say is that's not true. So I'm guessing that it's probably true. And that's scary. Huh. Are you going to reveal yourself to be more fill in the blank than you present yourself? Mm. Which is okay. Is it? Sure. Sure. Because, I mean, because no one will ever know. You see? I mean, like, like Shakespeare, you know? Shakespeare, did Shakespeare agree with, with the Scottish king, you know? Maybe. Maybe. You know, what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He probably had some very strange ideas about fairness and all kinds of shit. You know, uh -huh. through character, we can let aspects of our personality through, you know, through fiction we can let aspects of our personality out that might not be appropriate to air you know in conversations with friends hmm. and it, it's like you've got some <laughs> shit that you need to air go ahead 
you pick you chose this person i think that you have more a lot in common with them go ahead no no one will know except all of us of course but we'll never tell <laughs> i see you know what i mean yeah so so look for the common ground sure yeah and you can always say in your talkbacks or whatever, when you get interviewed by whatever, you can always say one of two things. One, a popular thing to say these days is I was being sarcastic, which seems to work for our, our, our commander in chiefs. So you can always blow it off to being sarcastic. Or you can say, you know, as a writer, I try to walk around in other people's shoes. You don't have to admit to believing in what your character believes in, unless you want to. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's Let not... your freak flag fly. <laughs> I got a freak flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you do. That's why you hang out with me. You got a freak flag, sister. Go on, let it fly. You, you've been keeping it wrapped up too long, all folded neatly in the drawer. You know, let it, woohoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been in the drawer for sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. Thank you, Crystal. Good to see you. Yeah. Same All here. right. Karima, you are next. Are you unmuted? Oh, hold on. Can you hear there me? We go. Yes, we can hear you. Hi. Yes, Karima. Hi. Hey. How are Hi. you? Hey, we're good. Um, hi. Um I um, usually um, write like short little plays with just two people. Uh huh. But the piece that I'm working on now that I'm extremely excited about has four people in it. And it's kicking my behind because I don't know if I should be right, like right now, I just have the dialogue moving without like making like without using too many directions. Uh -huh. But I'm finding some characters are speaking more than others, but the other characters are, do need to be there. So I'm like, I, I'm, I don't wanna say stuck, but I'm trying to figure out how to make it work because it's like it's, it's, it's in one setting. So my goal is I wanted to make it like a one act. So it's, a, it's, it's not going to change settings and stuff because they're like they're 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 four women and it's like a uh, at like a book club thing. So I'm kind of getting stuck of how to keep the characters alive. There's not speaking when the other characters are speaking. Is that weird? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Um, that's great. That's really great. Um, you want to keep, you have a four character play. Right. They're all in the same setting for the entire thing. Correct. And you want to keep the other characters alive when the other characters are speaking. Just, you know, it, it's, I, th I think you, you probably already figured it out. It's just sometimes people listen, sometimes people talk, sometimes people are doing things, you know? I mean, a, a, a not so great way I've seen writers do it, which is they send their characters on little errands. Like, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to make a private phone call. You know, that's kind of cheesy, I think. Right. Um, but you can actually have characters get really clear about what each of your characters wants. Okay. She wants this, she wants this, she wants this, she wants this, right? You have four characters. And then play that. Sometimes a character is, she really wants to hear the story that the other character is telling. Okay. Or she's maybe surfing her phone, or it's a book club. Maybe she's looking up a reference in one of the books. Or, you know, I mean, think of what is my character doing right now? Do a pass maybe through your play for each of the characters separately, maybe that helps too. Well, I did. I, I, I'm, I am do, I, I'm still working on it as I go because it's like fresh. Uh -huh. So I'm just like trying to let it run. Uh -huh. um, so I have done like a, a character analysis for each, all four of them. 
Great. It's not completely all filled in for everything okay. because I'm trying to figure it out too as I go. Okay. But the issue is heated. Uh huh. <laughs> so I'm just that's I think that's what's really throwing me because it's a it's a, it's a really um sensitive issue. Uh huh. So I'm just saying with I'm trying to say to myself with they because they can't talk over each other. So why not? Huh? Why not? But you would okay. Well, I mean, I mean, maybe they do. I'm just saying you can open it up. Sometimes they can be quiet. Sometimes okay. they can listen. Sometimes they could talk over each other. Okay. Maybe you know you you can you can again you can open it up a little bit. You don't have to put that. If it's a if it's a heated issue, maybe they are talking at the same time. Sometimes. Okay. That's allowed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good thank question. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, Vita, uh, you're up next. Okay. Hey, Vita, Hi. how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, good. Good to see you. I think likewise. I think we all missed you quite a bit. Oh. I know I did. I, um, I got some work done. Some more work. Right. Excellent. You deserve it. You're very, you're giving too much. So oh, no, 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 actually I'm giving, you know, I have like a, it's, it's exactly the appropriate amount. Oh, great. Excellent. <laughs> You're keeping some. <laughs> oh my God. So I, I decided I was going to do something similar and I'm going to tell the story of how my work was stolen because uh -huh. I think it's very important for people to hear, frankly. Uh -huh. I mean, I've told this story before, so for me, not so important, but I have to be careful though how I tell it, because mm. if I'm too specific, I think I really could get in trouble. Mm. But I think it's very important for people to know because it was so strange mm -hmm. that I never thought that this could happen. And I certainly didn't think it could happen to me because mm. I was just, it was like the first play I had ever written. Mm. I have a background as a, a fiction writer, mm -hmm. and then I was encouraged to uh, write one of my short stories after not writing for a while, after several years of not writing. Uh, there was a film producer who wanted me to, she said, well, if you ever turn this into a screenplay, let me know. So I thought, oh yeah, right, because as you know, it's a totally different form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And ultimately, that project turned out to be really hilarious and a joke. But what I decided to do, I worked very hard to learn the form. Mm -hmm. And I bought the books and I did all the stuff you recommended. I took a couple of classes oh, and I, I really did not have any money. And I was working very hard, which is, you know, as you said, part of life. So um, the point of this is my, I was so frustrated that with this other project, I decided to write something I really wanted to write. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a short play, a one act. I had never written, you know, I'm learning this form. I wrote a one act about a time in my early twenties when I went up on a roof on the side of a hotel. We climbed the emergency ladder in the snow. In the, <laughs> it, was, it was really on 23rd street, mm -hmm. you know, high. And we climbed this ladder and the, it was a shaky ladder, like we shouldn't have been doing this at all. And in one of those SRO hotels. And then I was hanging out with people who I thought were very, very brilliant, but you know, had issues. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and probably I did too, but it was very, very romantic and fascinating. And I never forgot the experience. So I said, okay, fuck all this. I'm just gonna write this one act mm -hmm. and um, have fun with it. And I was in a little group where actors read my words back, which was uh -huh. great. So uh, I ended up, there was a lot of stuff that happened in the middle, which we don't have time for, but I ended up uh, getting this one act up in one of the Toto Kanata theaters mm -hmm. uh, that used to exist uh, on Ludlow Street on the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. And with the director that I didn't know, mm -hmm. and they were rehearsing my play and his play. And then maybe, a week before it was due to go up, I got a phone call. So this was in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. I got a phone, I was working full time. I was just wiped out. I got a phone call that um, there was this group of creative people 
who will be unidentified, <laughs> who were sleeping in the rehearsal space, which was in the basement of Ludlow Street. Mm -hmm. And they, and uh, by the way, I'm going to be writing this story, so nobody else don't take this one because it's good. But anyway, they were um, sitting in on rehearsals of my play, and they wanted to get a copy of the script, or one of them did in particular because he had aspirations. Uh, he wanted to become an actor. Mm. So they, uh, he said to me, my director on the phone on a Sunday, I still remember this. He said, I, I said, I think we really have to call her and make sure it's okay with her. Maybe you should meet, meet her. So they tried to set up a meeting and this got these people, um, this was like a couple, a week later or so. And I had never heard of these people. These people were not on my radar at all. Um, they were introduced to me and then instead of sitting down and he looked very hurt somehow, something was upsetting him, I don't know what, and then they all left. And then uh, fast forward, and that was the end of it. And then fast forward to 10 years later, a, and what I did though, because I knew something weird was going on and I, with the little bit of money I had, I ran to the Writers Guild and registered my script thinking, that's going to help me somehow, which ultimately it did not. Then uh, I got a phone call uh, like a month later. Uh, the, the owner of this theater, this group of theaters, would like uh, to know if you have a full length of this. And I said, no. And they said, well, would you like to write one? And I said, OK, I'll, and submit it. So I did, which was grueling. And then nothing came of it. And I thought, this is really weird. But we did a, a, a reading. And I knew everyone at the reading except this one person who just somehow happened to be at the reading through someone else. And that one person walked off with the full length, which I only figured out 10 years later. So uh, there is much more to the story that happens 10 years later in, in the Bay Area. But the bottom line is what I want to explain there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in these situations that I could not even in my wildest dreams imagine could be happening. And I envisioned this play for the piano store, which was a little old honky tonk theater. And I was so like, you know, pissing myself excited that I got this play into the piano store <laughs> and I didn't. And what I didn't know was it was actually being developed for Broadway. I had no idea, nobody talked to me about this. I, it, I didn't understand that. And 10 years later, um, they came back for it. And it's a long, long story, but I really, I mean, some of it was, I'm not, I was into other types of entertainment, shall we say, I wasn't into this particular brand. And so I didn't know. I had no, I didn't even know who these people were. I was on a, in a different area. So uh, the reason I'm telling this to people is I did have it uh, copyrighted. They can still take it from you because if you have an expert adapter working on the script and a whole group of high powered theater professionals, they can do whatever they wanna do. Even they can take your script and take your idea and turn it into their version of it and it'll and they'll make a fortune off of it and they don't have to ask your permission as long as they don't actually lift the exact words of your play they can do whatever they want so i'm just sharing this because to all the people who think they can never write a play their first play and make it to broadway yes you can and people might actually want that and want your work, but also be aware that just getting the copyright doesn't mean that you're protected because lawyers told me, you know, clearly you're right, we all know this, but there's nothing we can do because they have so much money that they will just drag you through the mud and destroy your life. And when you're done with it, you won't even care that they stole your play because it'll ruin everything for you. So um, I just wanted to explain that this sort of thing can happen. <laughs> the thing I did learn recently, I was thinking about this today in a very odd way. 
the person who was very behind this idea of taking my work and who fell in love with the play. And by the way, to that person, thank you. Thank you for loving my work so much. I do appreciate it. But the thing I want to say is we were very similar people. Even though we came from very different walks of life, we magnetized each other energetically. I mean, I'm very aware of this. I was angry. I had been hurt in my life. I had, you, you described this at, at, at another session once about how you, people carry uh, baggage. You know, I had uh, an ax to grind with the world, but I was making it and I was happy with my work. I loved my play and he loved my play and he had an ax to grind too, I think. And we were sort of mirror images of each other in a very interesting way. Although looking, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't even know who this person was. But um, I so, you know, all of that said, if anyone wants to know more details, I'm happy to share privately. But <laughs> I would just say it's a fascinating situation. But I, I honestly can't believe this happened to me. And I think people should know that there is the possibility that something you can't imagine can happen. And just be aware, um, you know, try to be aware of who's around you and what's going on more thoroughly because, you know, our brains have limited capacity. You can only, you can't figure everything out all the time. It's impossible. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you for letting me share. I appreciate oh, it's it. It's a really good point, Vita. Wow. It's okay. a great Thanks, story. Vita. Thanks, Vita. All right. So, we're going to go on to Sahar. Sahar, are you with us? Hi. And if someone could mute, and if someone could mute, it's probably me. Okay, hold great. on one okay, second. Great. No worries. No. Shaika, yes. Hi, hi, Susan. Um, <laughs> I, 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 for a moment, I forgot my question, um, but <laughs> my question is basically, what next? Um, I, uh, it's Ramadan and I've been blogging every day. Um, and uh, like writing is not, writing is not a problem for me. Um, and like you were saying, like, I love, I mean, I love to like write and I'm just writing and writing and writing. Um, and I'm also very aware of my job prospects um, after the semester. Um, and I don't really, and I was just writing today, like I can't really see beyond today. Like if anybody asks me, what do I envision happening in the next year? Like I can't, I can't see like beyond today. Um, so I was wondering, like, how do you think about what next? Like I write and I finish a thing and it's there living on my blog. <laughs> or living on my laptop and then I move on to the next thing. Um, and uh, I don't really know like beyond today what's next um, with my writing. And that's where I am today. It might not be tomorrow that's where I am, but that's where I am today. So that's my question, what next? Um, what would you like to happen? If you could have anything happen, what would you like to happen with your work, Shahar? Um, well, with the, I mean, I, I would love for it to have a life, um, beyond myself. Um, but also, I don't know what that looks like. Like, like, is it a book? Do I publish it? And if I were to do that, how do I do that? Um, not the how, just the what? Yeah. Yeah. I think I would, I mean, I, I don't even know how many pages I've written this month. Like I've just written every single day. Um, and I could, I mean, I, I could imagine it being published. I could imagine it being illustrated. Um, you, are you an illustrator? No, I'm not. <laughs> I have a coloring book. <laughs> okay. No, but I mean, you could imagine it being published. You could imagine it being illustrated. Hmm. A lot of times, I mean, it's not that we have to th know what's next, but if you're asking what's next, how do I figure out what's next on this show, then we want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, um, 
usually I think to answer the question, what's next is what do I want? What do I want to do? I'm a character in a play, right? Aren't you? So, yeah. right. So what's next comes, the answer to what's next comes from what does a character want more than anything, right? There's the desire of what she wants. And then there's the allowing, will she allow herself to go for it? You know? So I want to, I want to write a song. So I sit here with my guitar. I also want to finish up some writing projects that I have to finish. So I sit and work on those, you know, it's just, what do I want? And if you, if you're okay with not knowing what's next, that's fine. But if you want to develop that conversation with yourself, then you have to ask yourself, what do I want? And it's okay to want what you want. And it's, then you have to allow yourself to go for what you want. You know, not get so tangled up in the how I'm going to ma manifest it, but just what, what would I like to do? I'd like to have, I'd like my, my blog, I'd like it to be published as a book. Oh, I'd like it to be illustrated. That'd be cool. Those are cool things. Or maybe I'd just like to write something other than this. In addition to this, I'd like to write something else. Maybe, you know, maybe you'd like to learn a new skill. Audrey's learning how to play the saw. Maybe you'd like yeah. to learn an instrument. You know what I mean? Maybe it's, maybe you'd like to learn, I don't know what. I have a friend in Chicago who uh, played, uh, she's got two kids. She played the cello as a, as a child. She's getting back into cello playing. Another friend who's played the saxophone in high school, you know, getting back into that. You know what I mean? Maybe it's something that you'd like to pick up that you put down years ago, you know, um, or something that you've always wanted to do. You know, I have a friend who just took up knitting because she always wanted to learn how to knit. So it doesn't have to be a grand thing or something you published or, you know, something grand. It can be something relatively modest. I have a friend, a great writer who's, who's starting a garden. Mm -hmm. She has a backyard. She's starting a garden, you know? So the what next, you just have to talk to yourself a little bit and say, what would I like? If, if, if the sky's the limit, what would I like to do? You know, and maybe there are 10 things or five things. It doesn't have to be just one, Sahar, you know? You know, I think the blog sounds really fascinating and beautiful. Keep writing that. In addition to that, ask yourself, what would you like? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah I think, I um, yeah, it makes a lot of, like, like some days I ask, okay, well, what I'd really like is a job. <laughs> great, great. You had one. Aren't you writing a blog every day? I am. Okay. I am. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I know how to keep myself, um, like how to make myself happy day to day. Okay. Um, yeah. Just go toward go towards your heart's desire now's the time you know crystal's gonna let her freak flag fly you can move toward you know <laughs> yeah. audrey's learning how to play the saw i mean come on people now's the time these are these are these are difficult very difficult times and kind of very nerve-wracking times but they're also times of opportunity if we can only see that in these times yeah these are times of opportunity so let's go toward you know let's recognize the difficulty and the fear and the scariness and all those things but let's also recognize that there are moments of opportunity in these times you know okay thank you sahar thanks sahar who else audrey we've got about one more minute we've got anna scott go for it anna hey anna how you doing today uh, are you writing that choreograph yeah you are remember Yes, I am, and I'm in the third part, and I just had a freak out moment today while I was writing in a little moment where it felt so big and like there was so much stuff and so many things happening. So, um, I was like, well, that's good that it's scaring me. But um, I did have a question about proliferation of objects or proliferation 
Division of Human Action Group. Your voice was kind of wavering. So I heard you say you're working on your piece. Correct me if I'm wrong. You had a freak out moment. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. And you had a question about proliferation. And then yeah. your voice kind of got quavery and I couldn't understand exactly what you said after that. All right, I'm gonna stop the video. Okay, so, go um, ahead. Better. Proliferation, meaning um, so, many, so many objects arriving on the stage, uh, maybe the need for lots of bodies to be moving the objects in and out. Uh, I was just having this moment where it felt almost impossible, but it felt really necessary. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering about the process of um, going big without going cluttered. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, that's very, that? yeah, that's, that's very interesting. Um, and because uh, uh, I, as you were talking, I was going to ask you your physical space. So um is your physical space cluttered uh in my own house no but on the stage that i'm envisioning in my head it's mm -hmm. starting to get mm -hmm. the, the couch okay table. so the secret you know, garden on the inside. There's a chopping block that secretly and alters the characters standing in dirt, but the audience doesn't know it until she starts to get out of it. It's, and there's sugar everywhere. Right. Make sure that each thing, each character on stage, each object on stage is being utilized. Okay. Okay. Okay, just like um, if, if, you're, if your physical space was cluttered, right? If your living room, dining room, I'm sitting in my living room, dining room, right? If there was stuff all over the place, right? It's hard to know what's going on with everything all cluttered. Your desk is piled up, there's stuff all over the place, right? So you want to be able to go, okay, my phone is here for a reason. My timer, I know what that's for. Look at this pen. I have a pen, you know, so you want to try to or begin to organize the various elements that are on your stage okay so if there's sugar everywhere how is that being employed by your characters you know what i mean it's just all over the place you know because once it is actually employed and utilized by your characters then it'll seem necessary more necessary than it might feel now you know the character who's in, you said dirt and she's coming out of dirt. Is that what you said? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Make that a real thing. Really get into that. Make it really, really employ those elements, those theatrical elements. Okay. Don't just kind of hit it and quit it and go on to the next thing. Don't be scattershot about it. Oh, look this. Oh, look this. Oh, look this. Oh, look this. You know, really go deep and thorough with each theatrical element, each character, each moment. Okay. All right. Really get have a, a deep relationship with each thing that you bring on stage. Every single thing, even if there's only one thing that you bring on stage. Okay. Um, each and we talked about the other day about um, I think it was Carol Wilson who was talking about objects. Were you talking about objects, Carol, the other day? Yeah, she was talking about objects, how a handkerchief, you know, we were talking about how every object can resonate with meaning. You just have to put your attention on it, right? So you have sugar, you have dirt, you have something else, you have a lot of characters there. Really allow yourself to focus on these characters. Maybe slow down a little bit with the activities an action okay thank okay. you Anna. thank you slp it's 604 it's 604 Woo! the time where does it go oh. well every day 3 p.m you can sign up by 3 p.m eastern time on the public theater website uh and i'll send a link between 3 p.m and 4 30 p.m eastern and we'll see you tomorrow all right
We love you guys. See you tomorrow. We love you. Bye. Thank okay. you, SOP. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey.